Hi, and welcome into my studio. This is John Small. Today we're going to be working on this whimsical piece done in pastel pencil on pastel mat. Stick around. So this is just loosely sketching out um, the scene that we're going to be working from. And this is a pan pastel. Those are very compact pigment, like a pastel powder, but it's, uh, it's not a loose powder. And you just dip this sponge in it, you mix them onto a sheet of paper, uh, just like this. So I'm just taking those two colors, blending them, just as you would if you were blending oil paints, acrylics, watercolor. You're just taking two pigments and with that sponge for these large areas in the upper left hand corner you can see I'm just just basically taking that sponge and I'm just going through these large areas. So nothing will be detailed here. What I'm trying to do is just get the general feel of the, the sketched out piece. So I'm using a dark purple it's actually the combination of purple and the dark gray, just mixing those two together, putting them on a sheet of paper, making sure it's the right tone, and we're just going to blend that in. Pastels blend really well, so if you don't have the exact color that you're looking for, just do some basic mixing. You can mix several colors together. I just happen to be using the purple and the dark gray. And if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button over in the right hand corner or down below. Just a quick mention, I have a Patreon channel full of videos, reference photos, and information with new videos and reference photos being added every month. Videos for the complete beginner that have never done illustrations, and I'll take you from the very first marks and concept sketches all the way through to my final detailed completed works. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well, and in all my videos I take you through all the details so you'll see everything. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices, and many of my videos span three hours, so you're going to see a lot of detail and tips on creating your own artwork and illustrations. And if you would like to see the full tutorial on this, sign up on my Patreon and you'll get nearly two hours with in-depth, detailed explanations of each step I take you along the way. So I'm just taking one of the pan pastel tools and this is a little bit smaller than that sponge. It lets me have a little bit more control into the smaller areas and it's kind of like a palette knife would be uh, for artists that do acrylics and oil when they just paint with palette knives. This is maybe similar to that and there's different sizes of palette knives. So I'm just taking that in and you can see I'm just getting a little bit more control on these uh, slightly smaller areas but again, the, the fine detail will be in a, a smaller application of this same tool. They have smaller ones that are like the size of a Q-tip, but really the pencils will be for me to get into the really fine details. And I always use that at the end once everything is completely filled in.
subtle parts in that greenery in the background, the bush that's carrying in some of the color as we're into autumn, and there might be some berries here. A lot of this is perceived from the photograph, and some of it's imagined in using illustration work, especially outside of the commissions that might be more specific or more detailed. You can add in what you like here, and if you're seeing something in nature, you can bump that up a little bit. It's your interpretation which makes artwork more expressive and how you want to uh, perceive a scenery or a photograph. You create this world uh, in your drawing, in your illustration, your imagination as something that you can more fully express and capture the colors that you want to introduce. So introducing a little bit of these reds and oranges in the background is showing a bit of the fall and a bit of the natural foliage that comes out in these plants. So while they might be primarily green, we can still add colors to indicate that there's variety in the color, it could have berries on it. Fall is often here in New England and on Cape Cod has its own unique colors and that's what I'm introducing into these background bushes and plants. Here, adding the highlights into these trees in the background. Just this light green indicate that where some of the treetops are receiving the majority of the moonlight. You don't want to try to be drawing every leaf that you see in the background, especially mid-ground. Foreground you can have a little bit more detail and just blend it off. Our eyes fill in the blanks and they fill in the pieces that we don't actually see. We're just indicating those light areas that are getting the moonlight and shades of grays in the dark background areas and behind these bushes here. So these these bushes and trees are protruding up a little bit more than the receded part of the background. The shade is going to be more on the left side of what we're looking at, so that's going to be a little bit darker. streaks of light are coming through and that's going to add a little bit more depth and if you can see the pencil you can see it's not a white pencil I'm using a cool and medium gray medium to light gray more of a dynamic shaded area and still carrying on that layered effect of these colors, almost like a translucency. When we see a color, we're not just seeing one flat color, we're seeing many colors and hues that make up a color that our eyes perceive as being one thing or another. So a pumpkin has a lot of characteristic in it and a lot of different colors to build in, especially when it's in the shading. I'm gonna keep building this up.
this is the charcoal pencil, the black that I'm using. And you can see it looks a little different than the others, but I'm going in lightly here, so I'm not just putting on black. And I'm using this pretty sparingly. And just starting to add in the element of whimsy. And that's just by putting some faces on these pumpkins, uh, making them into jack-o'-lanterns, and working just with different expressions, just out of imagination, playing around and having fun with this. It doesn't have to be really precise, and you have some flexibility with pastel pencils to change the expressions if you want, and just don't go too heavy, don't apply a lot of pressure. You know, enjoy this process, and you know, create your own faces if you're gonna do something seasonal or you're going to work with jack-o'-lanterns, have fun. Can continue adding a lot more color depending how autumnal you want it to look and depending on the region that you live in. And these yellow ochre colors really brings out that light hitting it and as we can see it in the foreground and we'll add a little bit more color in. And with just adding a signature down at the bottom left corner, this will wrap up my whimsical autumnal seasonal <laughs> illustration titled Jack-O-Lanterns Along the Ghostly Railroad Tracks of Truro. I hope you enjoyed this and please let me know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see in upcoming videos. I have a lot more coming up and I hope you enjoy the season.